could your cell phone disrupt your sleep? If you search the internet for this question, you're going to get a lot of different opinions. Oh, it can. There's no way it can. Uh, anything in between. Your cell phone's going to kill you. Let's look at what scientists had to tell about this question published in an article in Scientific American is uh, an opinion opinion piece or let's say a summary of research on recent research at the time but from 2008 i'm gonna share my screen so you look that uh and and verify that this is you know a very mainstream uh, source of information it's nothing that uh, i'm just making up or anything like that so it's scientific american here the article is called mind control by cell phone of course we're not talking about mind control it's kind of a, a cheeky way of putting it but uh electromagnetic signals from cell phones can change your brain waves and behavior Okay, that's, wow, okay, that's something, but don't break the aluminum foil head shield just yet. So, right right there, uh, writer uh, Douglas Fields uses this kind of uh, dismissive uh, BS here, aluminum foil, right, this is tinfoil hatter stuff, this is why my book is called The Non-Tinfoil Guide to EMFs, because most people think this is tinfoil, in reality, it's not. It's not tinfoil hatter stuff. It is uh, toxicology. It is environmental medicine. So it's completely mad to me that this writer right off the bat, you know, has to, oh, I'm going to add a little bit of a dismissive attack here or else I cannot publish this in Scientific American. That's that's kind of the state of the thinking around the topic of EMFs and cell phone dangers back in 2008, uh, 15 years ago as I'm recording this. So let's dive into it and look at what happens. I'm going to go quickly here, but basically talk about a few studies that they talk about. The first was led by Rodney Croft, who's now uh, the head of ICNRP. ICNRP is one of the international bodies uh, that is, uh, and I say the head, is is the uh, chairman at ICNRP. So I guess it's uh, one of the highest positions you can have and ICNRP is a regulatory body that is supposed to be completely independent and figure out what are the safe levels of cell phone radiation and other EMFs that people should be exposed to. So the researchers monitored brainwaves of 120 healthy men and women with a Nokia 6000 or 6110 cell phone. Uh, we can look at what this cell phone looked like this is a dinosaur, right? So this is research on a very old kind of phone, a Nokia. I mean, if someone uses that, uh, it says availability by region in 1998. So it was used at the beginning of the 2000s, if I follow this correct correctly, which makes sense. So one of the most popular cell phones in the world in 2008 was strapped to the head of these 120 participants. What they did is they had a double blind experimental design. So the test subjects didn't know when the cell phone was transmitting and uh, the EEG data was collected. So that's their brain waves of these participants. So the test subjects or the researchers, both of them are blinded, which is which is what double blind means. So they don't know when it's being when people are being exposed to a cell phone or when they're just being exposed to a cell phone that is turned off. So there should be no effect. So. The data showed that when the cell phone was transmitting information, the power of a characteristic brainwave pattern called alpha waves in the person's brain was boosted significantly. So, um, and was the activity was greatest in the brain tissue directly beneath the cell phone, strengthening the case that the cell phone was responsible for the observed effect. Then they talk about cell phone insomnia. If cell phone signals boost a person's alpha wave, does this nudge them uh, into an altered state of consciousness or have any effect on their behavior? Well, in a second study, James Horn colleagues at uh, Lowborough University Sleep Research Center in England uh, did uh, an experiment to test this question. They said the result was surprising. So not only could the cell phone signal uh, alter a person's behavior during the call, but the effects of the disruptive brainwave patterns continued long after the phone was switched off. 
This was a completely unexpected finding, Horn told me. We didn't suspect that any effect on EEG uh, would would be present after switching of the phone. So we were interested in studying the effect of mobile phones on sleep itself. So basically, it became obvious to Horn and his colleagues in preparing for the sleep research experiments that some of the test subjects had difficulty falling asleep. So basically, I don't know if that's a, a separate study or just a, a, a another part of the same study, but anyhow, the researchers monitored the man's uh, brain waves by EEG while the phone was switched on by or off by a remote computer and also switched between standby, listen and talk modes of operation, 30 minute intervals on different nights. The experiment revealed that basically you had effects on brain waves and the a certain brain wave called delta waves remained dampened for nearly an hour after the phone was shut off so these brain waves that are the most reliable and sensitive markers of stage two sleep which is approximately a 50 percent of total sleep uh, in humans remained uh, and the subjects remained awake twice as long after the phone transmitting in talk mode was shut off so what does this mean i'm gonna um turn off the screen for a second here what does this mean? Well, they tested the impact of a phone and they discovered that it shifts your brain waves, right? And um, it was in 120 participants at first, and I don't recall how many participants were in this second study by Horn and colleagues. Uh, it was the head of 10 uh, people. So it, it's, it's a very small scale study, right? We need a bigger set of a data set to make sure this is significant, but it's something and they were surprised. They didn't think it would shift brain waves. So they, they realized that um, the these people that were already sleep deprived the night before could not fall asleep for nearly one hour after the phone had been operating without their knowledge. So that's something, right? So here's the kicker and let me take a sip of water here. Why I'm sharing this today is to show you that early experiments and that this is not the only study, right? There's other indications that, for example, cell phones, uh, cell phone radiation, the radio frequency radiation they emit might reduce melatonin release or even melatonin production, if I recall correctly, in human subjects and also in animals such as rats or mice. So there's all this data is there. But here's what these researchers thought about it. And this is, to me, the very uh, shocking part that made me uh, almost, you know, spit my coffee when I read that. So um, although this research shows that cell phone transmissions can affect a person's brain waves with persistent effects on behavior, Horn does not feel there is any need for concern that cell phones are damaging. What do you mean? What, how is that a sentence in Scientific American? He does not feel there is any need for concern. As if Horn wants to, has the, uh, the knowledge, is he in public health, right? I don't understand how we can make this deter deter determination. To me, this is very, very uh, frustrating to see someone that does an experiment that finds effect with persistent effects on behavior. And yes, it affects your brain waves. Yes, it, it affects your, your sleep pattern. But no, there's no concern right the arousal effects the researchers measured are equivalent to about half a cup of coffee let me take let me just move here where's that thing half a cup of coffee so what horn is saying and what others like rodney croft you'll, you'll see he also kind of has the same opinion is that well we test your phone Right, we test a Nokia, so that's an old phone. We don't know. Maybe the 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 most recent phones are more uh, are affecting your brain waves more or less. We don't know. That's a Nokia. That's like a dinosaur at this point, like 15 years ago, 20 years ago. What they say is this: we test whether cell phones can impact brain waves and keep people awake for longer, so disrupting their sleep. If it disrupts their sleep, it disrupts their blood sugar. Hormonal regulation, long-term longevity, uh, overall health, um, mood, energy levels, relationships, everything, right? We know how important sleep is. So if you change sleep even a little bit, I could argue that there's 
you know, over time, an effect on health, an effect, an effect on wellness, and then it remains to be seen and, and I, I'd say proven, but maybe an effect on your, your risks of diseases including maybe uh, related to blood sugar regulation, so, such as uh, diabetes, for example. But we don't know that. So what they say is we do find an effect, but it, no, guys, it's not a big deal because it's just the equivalent of half a cup of coffee. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost speechless and I tend to talk too much. So, you know, it's incredible. Okay, let, let me just, the last part, I'll, I'm ju just going to stop my rant here and, and share that again for a second to show you the end of the article. So the significance of <clears throat> this research, he says, is that although the, although the cell phone power is low, which is true, it's low power, electromagnetic radiation can nev nevertheless have an effect on mental behavior when transmitting at, transmitting at the proper frequency. And he says, he finds this fact especially remarkable when considering that everyone is surrounded by electromagnetic clutter, that I call it electropollution, radi radiating from all kinds of electronic devices. That's true. That's true. Cell phones in talk mode seems to be well-tuned to frequencies that affect brainwaves at uh, activity. The results show sensitivity to low-level radiation to a subtle degree. These findings open the door by a crack for more research to follow. And check this. One only wonders if with different doses, durations, or other devices, would there be greater effects? So they pose the question, would there be greater effects with a different phone? Maybe a more recent phone or maybe a longer duration. So instead of uh, using a phone next to your head for 30 minutes, you keep it all night, every night under your pillow like a large fraction of the entire population, including children or adolescents, are currently doing. Would there be greater effects? Well, I guess we got to find a question urgently, right? It's, it's, it's an urgent health question in a population that is already uh, not sleeping enough. We know that people are not sleeping enough hours. They're too busy and they're watching shows at night and uh, the average person should sleep more. And we know that the quality isn't there and many people suffer from insomnia or sleep troubles and it's increasing. Croft of Sw uh, Swinburne em emphasizes that there are no health worries from the, these new findings. There's Croft, a guy that is now responsible for overlooking EMF regulations. Can you see this kind of hubris? How can he make this determination that having an effect on sleep is equivalent to no health worries what on earth is he talking about i'm sorry but this is this is stupid at best this is extremely irresponsible i'm i find it it's one of the most frustrating article i've ever read in scientific american i don't read it that much but this is just another level of stupidity uh and 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 hubris from from these scientists the exciting thing about this research is that it allows us to have a look at how you might modulate a brain function and uh this tells us something about how the brain works so he's excited as someone looking at neuroscience and they say well you know it's going to help us understand the brain and and these kind of things it's exciting right for medical applications what about health what about the fact that people want to sleep normally so do you see so let me ask you this i'm going to conclude this way i've been running too much let me ask you this have you ever heard about this research have you ever heard that the early studies on cell phones and brain waves show an effect and that we don't have the follow-up studies that have been done to make sure that your phone is safe and will not impact your brain waves so that you can get deeper sleep and just be a healthier person have you been warned on the inserts on the packaging that your cell phone might interfere with your sleep not, not the notifications, not the social media distractibility, not the blue light emitted by it. And that's why I have these weird glasses on just to try to mitigate some of that. But especially at night, if you look at screens, we know it will disrupt your sleep. And that's that's a, another topic. But just the 
radiation emitted by your phone can also disrupt your sleep? And the answer is no, because these are all rhetoric, rhetoric questions. I know that people are not being warned, and that's really the conclusion here is that this is completely unacceptable and that these scientists doing the experiments should report the results and not engage in complete speculation about how, oh, it's only a half a cup of coffee. The, the level of dismissiveness and hubris is completely disgusting to me. There's no other way to say it. And I wish I could end uh, this year's podcast on a better note. <laughs> but it's just to show you an example that sometimes the experiments are done. It shows results that are damaging, or I would call it damaging. I would call it negative results towards users, towards our wellness. And then the, 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 the biases of the researchers themselves are so thick, they're so set in stone that even with those results, their conclusion is, oh, don't worry, there's no health worries. What on earth are you talking about? Really, shame on you, Croft. Shame on you, whatever researcher that was. Because I find it completely, completely, completely unacceptable that you will completely dismiss the results of your own study. Instead, they should report and say, well, you know, we have these devices and we... And it doesn't is that it doesn't get to the public. It doesn't get to public health authorities, and we cannot at the moment tr trust ICNRP or in the states you would have the FCC or in Canada you would have Health Canada that are supposed to protect users against these effects. We have the studies, we have the experiments. We need more large scale studies to find what is the safe dose, right? If there is even a safe dose, right? Right now, scientists say there probably is zero safe dose of EMFs. But what we know is that it disrupts sleep. So what can you do? Turn off your phone, put it on airplane mode, put it in the next room if you cannot do these uh, two first steps I've recommended. Uh, turn off your Wi-Fi at night. Don't keep wireless devices in your room. And chances are, the, the worst thing that could happen is the research is wrong, I'm wrong, it doesn't matter, and you've wasted a few seconds. The best thing that could happen is you sleep better, just like almost every single person uh, that I've, I've heard feedback from at this point. You sleep better, and you live a healthier life. And since we are left to navigate this topic by ourselves, and that's a, a tragic thing in, in this day and age, if you want my opinion, uh, well, do it. It's really your responsibility to look at this information, look at the studies, read the article, think this is all BS and do nothing, or decide to do something. Talk about it with your spouse, turn off the phones, make it a new rule in your bedroom, turn off the Wi-Fi, uh, and start engaging in these practices to lower EMFs. And that's really my mission. That's why I'm the EMF guy. I want to help you just minimize EMF radiation. There's nothing to sell here. Look, I have courses, I have different products that can help that I recommend, but there's nothing to sell. Click the button, airplane mode, turn off, click the button off on your iPhone before you go to sleep. And it will remove distraction, blue light, pings, notifications. And on top of that, we know there are strong indications that your brain waves are negatively impacted by this radiation. So don't fall for it. Do something about it. And I'll see you next year with more tips like this. And I'll uh, follow the latest research on this crazy topic that is, once again, my friends, not tinfoil hatter stuff at all. And even less so than when I started six years ago. So I hope you have a good rest of 2023 and I'll see you uh, around mid-January for the next episode of the Smarter Tech Podcast. I'll be back with a new background, a new camera and all this. I'm doing an upgrade. So can't wait to, sh can't wait to show it to you. Enjoy. I hope you liked this episode. If you liked it, share it, like it, comment. If you think this is BS, 
comment still and we can talk. Thank you. Ciao.